Good morning, and today we are here in Oslo, Norway, and we are headed to an open air museum. We're gonna try waffles and cheese. Yeah, that's a thing apparently here. The Opera House, and apparently you can take a trip in a sauna. But of course you have that beautiful view of the Opera House. How was it? <laughs> but we got a lot of things we got to do today, but first we have to head to the train station. So it looks like we are track five, leaving in eight minutes. Only a few stops from Oslo Central Station, and we arrived here at Skoyo Station. I probably slandered that, but it's a 28 minute walk, 1.3 miles, but Oslo just, it just feels so good in the summertime. Like it's 73 degrees here right now and it's July. One thing, one thing you have to say about Norwegians is they do know what they're doing with wood. We finally made it to the world's oldest open air museum. Started in the late 1800s. And y'all know I love open air museums because it really shows you what that's, that country, the cities used to look like. Now, this is Norway and the year I want to say around 1000 because that's when towns started popping up. But first we're headed to the old town and apparently back then the rich and middle class would be together mixed in and everything and towns were situated along the coast because that was the vital artery of the Norwegian people. Now this is an old market from the, you said the 1920s? Yes. From the 1920s. And to be honest, this is why you need to come to open air museums, because they also have people that are acting and they're showing you what the day-to-day -day life was. And I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. It's difficult. How do I say it again? <laughs> you rolled R. It, hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what about your middle name? I don't have a middle name. Your last name. That's even harder. Man, I'm so sorry. No, it's not. I feel like it's not hard. It's just hard because I don't speak your language. Exactly. Okay. Well, I'm Davion. Pardon? I'm Davion. Davion? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it was yeah. nice meeting you. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, this is the old town Christiana. It used to be called Oslo, but in the late 1600s, all of Oslo burned to the ground and the king renamed it Christiana and mandated that all the homes be built with stone structures or half timber to prevent the whole city from burning down again. I uh, live in the house over there, the white one. Uh, my name is Agnes and I live here together with my husband Carl and our seven children. And then what are you doing right here? I'm pl uh, plucking some berries because uh, we are going to have dessert when the kids are coming home. Uh, and uh, yes, we're going to eat dinner and then we will have berries for a dessert with sugar on it. Not the English word, but in Norwegian we call it rips. Rips? Yes. Okay, well I like the Norwegian version better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then what year were you born? Uh, I was born in 1905. 1905? Yeah. Well, I was born in 1997. Okay. And my name is Davion West. Yes. And you said your name was Agnes. Agnes, yes. Okay, it was nice meeting you, Agnes. I'm sorry for uh, disturbing you. No, nice to meet you. <laughs> So this is Agnes's kitchen, where her and her husband live, and there's seven kids. Well, not just the kids, and of course. Okay, you guys know also. I love old stove. I think this is on right now. Yeah, it is on. Oh wow. This, this is the this is the bedroom where seven people lived. There's a lot that people can really do when they have to. Okay, you guys just have to get lost when you're here at this open air museum because y'all can't tell me that this is not beautiful. Like just the significance of the history. I guess my first question is, what are these two different bread things? Cause I mean, it looks like a waffle, but I'm guessing it's, it, I don't know, what it is, is it? It is a waffle. And then this is cheese on top. Yeah, that's brown cheese, Norwegian cheese. It's like caramelized sweet cheese. Do you guys like it? I love it, yeah. 
So you what's should, you should try. Which one should I get? Because there's two different ones I see. Yeah, or you toppings. Can, you can like choose the toppings. You don't need to get what's on the picture. So I usually do brown cheese and strawberry jam. And that's like the OG one, the uh, original. I think I think that's the best one. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll take that. And okay. is there like a certain drink I should have with it, or? Uh, well, not really. Milk. <laughs> Milk. But yeah. If you want to be like really energy, you should try to like drink. drink. Okay. How do I say milk in Norwegian? Milk. So kind of like Svenska? Yeah. Milk, milk, milk. Or they say milk. The one you said, the one you said. Okay, perfect. Always yeah, recommendations. Like the brown cheese is like caramel. It's, it's sweet. Okay. And made out of goat milk. Yeah. Thank you. If it's not good, I'm coming back to talk to y'all. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this apparently is a Norwegian thing. A waffle and jam and brown cheese, which is caramelized cheese, so it's like a sweet cheese, and then apparently white milk. All right, so some people fold this in. We're just gonna fold it all the way in half, like a sandwich. Great waffle, but I didn't get none of that cheese. Oh. Okay, this sounds, this tastes familiar. Oh. It kind of tastes like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but way better. Like the cheese, ah, uh, and it's also made from goat milk, right? When y'all come here, y'all need to make sure y'all stop at the bake shop and get some of this, like, this is fire. 10 out of 10, recommend. So what kind of bread is this? It's called lefse. Lefse, and it's sort of a flat, like a sweet flat bread. Um, and it was made in the mid 1700s. Um, for a really special occasion because sugar and wheat, we didn't have that in Norway, so it needed to be imported, and that was very expensive. So only the really rich farmers could afford it. And then we use it for special occasions like uh, christenings, funerals, and weddings. Oh, this is a fresh one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we make this all day long. So they're always fresh. Right behind me is Gold Stave Church, and Stave Churches were made entirely out of wood back from around, I want to say 900 to the 1300s. Now this church originally stood in gold, but in around the 1800s they built a new church and we're going to demolish this building, destroy this beautiful building. But thankfully, the society saved it, the monarchy saved it, and now it is here in Oslo magnificent building, a mix between Christianity and also Norse mythology from back in the day. When they moved the state church from Gol all the way to Oslo, they actually took this church, I believe, apart and then reconstructed it here. Now, most of the artifacts are original, but apparently the actual outside of the state church is from the 1800s. All right, so we're gonna try the bus system here in Oslo, the folk museum. And apparently you can buy tickets using the Router app. So let's see how this goes today. Kind of just really going with the flow. All right, so the bus, not bad. They actually have USB A and USB C charging on the bus. Just make sure you press the button when you're ready to get off so they don't try to close the doors on you like they did for me. Vigeland Museum needs to be in your itinerary if you're coming here to Oslo, Norway. This museum is based off of Gustav Vigeland. Gustav Vigeland. Gustav Vigeland. This was his studio and he signed a contract with the city of Oslo. And basically the contract went, you get this place as your studio if in the future after your death, all of your works of art will be donated and this will become a museum. And when I tell y'all, this man was a pure genius. When you walk into the, the love room, you can just really feel it tugging on your heart. Those strings are tugging hard. You can feel the emotion. 
and the sculptures themselves. And then when you get to the huge room, I was just blown away with the fountain sculpture, with the sculptures holding up the fountain, looking at all the little sculptures. Every little small part had a detail. It was honestly breathtaking. And whenever he was asked about his art, he didn't really want to give the actual definition of what the art meant. He just wanted you to feel the art, feel its simplicity. And the final room, probably my favorite room in this museum was, I don't know the name of it y'all, but when you walk in, you'll see sculptures layered and layered on top of each other. And it's just, I don't even, I can't even put it into words. But next we're headed to the actual public park that he built or had sculptures in and everything. I'm super excited for that. So come see this before you go to the Vigalen Park. So you have a little bit of history about this man. Now, I believe this, or all of these sculptures, is called the monolith. 121 different sculptures where they are reaching up to, well, not these, but up there, 121 sculptures reaching up to the heavens. All intertwined. Toddlers, women, men, and then there's a seagull up there. I don't think that was part of the, the art exhibit. Now, this right here is one of the huge centerpieces of this park. 21 statues where every individual statue represents a different part of the human life all the way from toddler to old age so walk around see the sculptures and just see what emotion does it invoke in you so walk around and just see what these sculptures say to you i think this is probably my favorite park i've ever been to and the fact that it's free there's all these different sculptures and meanings to them this really just makes you want to get out and just breathe in that fresh air. And I think that's, that's really what Norway is about, getting outside and experiencing life. So these right here are floating saunas. And honestly, we're about to hop in one of those. That is literally on the sea right here with the opera house in the back. And you can actually jump in to the sauna. It's crazy. Now this is the actual sauna room. Hi. So I met her at my hostel, her at my hostel. Hostel. Yeah, so these two are roommates, mm -hmm. and then these two are random people. <laughs> She's from LA, Australia, 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 Sweden slash America. I don't really know where oh, he's no, from. England. <laughs> England. <laughs> England. Not America. You're not gonna claim America? Nope, I'm half English, half Swedish. I've lived in America. Sorry. Okay, he doesn't exist right now. He's not here. <laughs> For 240 Norwegian krona, 24 US dollars, right? Yeah. You get all of this. I don't know if you're gonna get people that are cool like this, but you never know. And that's the great thing about travel. You get to meet random. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you get to meet random people like this, bump into random people. Honestly, a great time to be alive. We definitely do not do this in Texas. Is it has it stopped? Wait, so why'd you put the water on there, on the rocks? So it steams the, you know, it humidiates the room, and uh, otherwise it just dries out, and it's <clears throat> pretty, pretty bad. I'm gonna be honest, it's pretty bad right now with having water. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot! Right, I mean, there's Talking two different. Oh. You, can do, you can do steam, but you can also do dry sauna. Dry sauna is just, the air, dry, it's hard to breathe, it's disgusting. It's hard to breathe now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying, I'm from Texas. Do you know so it also comes with a Bluetooth speaker, but the only problem is the speaker does not work. And he actually talked to the guy. What did the guy tell you about the speaker? Um, he said it just wasn't working and that it was all full for cheeky, booking the cheapest option. <laughs> He's being really, really nice. Like the guy was walking away and he was just not caring at all. I don't know if this is like a Norwegian thing or if that was just him. And I feel like it was really just him because I've had a good, great time with a lot of Norwegians so far. So I'm here with <laughs> the most. And he's sweetest. I met him in the hostel, and apparently he's gonna make me jump off of this right here. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I did not know what to expect when coming to Oslo, Norway. I did not know that you could rent a sauna and then jump in the water. This place 
is crazy and just different. And that's why you gotta travel and see the world. With that being said, I'm Davion West. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna follow me to 196 countries.